Ooh, stick around, ladies and gentlemen, because today we're knocking out Fuck Cajun Ninja Style. All right, first up, what we have here is roughly eight pounds of beef bones, a five to six pound slab of brisket, three oxtails, and roughly one to two pounds of eye of round roast in that package there. I'm going to move that one to the fridge, later maybe the freezer for about 40 minutes to an hour, so that way I can get it thinly sliced. Man, I tell you what, I am pumped about this. I headed over to my local meat market, and they were able to supply me with the bones, the brisket, they were able to slice up some eye of round, and they even had oxtails. Now look, every meat market's different, so you'll just need to check with yours to see if they have all of this. Let's go. So the first thing we'll do is move our bones, brisket, and oxtail into a large pot and fill it up with water. This pot here is a 20-quart pot. You could probably get away with a 15-quart pot, but anything less than that, according to this recipe, would be a little tough. Once you got everything completely submerged, you'll take the pot and move it over to the stove. Looking good. All right, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and turn our heat up to a high setting. There we go. And we want to get this to a rolling boil. When this reaches a rolling boil, that's when you set the timer for 10 minutes. We're gonna boil off all the impurities up in the bone and maybe some of the meat here, and we're gonna dump it out. I know that's gonna freak some of you guys out, but that is how it's done. I've done a lot of research. I got some Asian buddies. They done hooked me up, okay? So just follow along. Now this time, you can go ahead and set the broil setting on your oven. Mine's at 550 degrees. We're going to turn that on there and get that heated up. All right, so back over to our prepping area, we have our vegetables. Now look, I know some of my Asian people out there are watching this and saying, we don't put all that in our pho. <laughs> I get it, okay? But look, this is Cajun Ninja style, and I had to have the Trinity. So without further ado, what we have here is two yellow bell peppers, four large yellow onions. If you don't get large, you may want to go five to six onions, two heads of garlic, one ginger, which is probably about six inches in length maybe, and three sticks of celery, one of which I left the leaves on just to give a little bit more aromatics to the broth. Let's go. So I went ahead and washed all these vegetables really good first. I also took the liberty of peeling off the first layer of the onions here. That way the good meaty parts of the onion are going to really take to the broth. You know, for now, we're going to go ahead and put them all down here and get them sliced. Kind of like this. Hiya! Oh. Pretty much like that. <laughs> Okay, so this is what you're left with right here. We will be taking this and moving it to the oven so that way it can roast up a little bit until we see some charring start to form and then remove it from there. All right, so you're gonna wanna monitor this in between that five to 10 minute mark because this can char up quickly. So this is almost done right here and as you can see that scuzziness on the top right there, that's what we're looking to get rid of. We will be dumping this out shortly. Meanwhile, we're getting a saute pan heated up on the side on like a medium, medium high heat. So just to let you guys know, we will be adding two packs of this right here, which is like a spice seasoning mix that they use in pho. It's full of coriander, fennel, clove, and star anise. This is what gives it that aromatic flavor. I think it's called Zavino Faba. Forgive me. I'm a Cajun dude trying to speak Vietnamese. <laughs> Be careful. So we really want to wash these off from here. Turn our water on. And we're just going to spray it all down really good. 
And also we'll put our hands on them too, just to kind of get off any, any excess that we don't want in there. You know, we want a really clean broth. So that's what we will be doing from here. All right, we've removed the vegetables from the oven. And as you can see, we got some charring that has formed on them. Some probably like to char their onions and all up a lot more than this, but you can run the risk of really burning it. Of course, if you do that, you can always kind of wash off some of that excess charring. You know, I've seen it done already. Um, the garlic roasted up really beautifully. I'm gonna go ahead and just add all of this to my pot here of my bones and brisket that have been washed off. And then I will add some water. All right, we got that in there. So at this time, I add a gallon of water. And then I'll add another half gallon of water. There we go. Now look, if you have a 20 quart pot like I do here, you can add a little more water and then gradually cook it down. But this amount that I've given you is enough for a 15 quart pot, which may be something that people already have on hand. So that way you don't have to go out and buy yourself a 20 quart pot just to do this dish. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and turn our heat up, get this thing back up to a boil. Get it on kind of a high heat. All right, guys, I've taken the liberty of removing the spices from the spice packs here. I like these little spice packs because they come with the cheesecloth and they've got everything you need in the pack. I get this from my local Vietnamese market. Now, if you don't have a Vietnamese market near you, then what you'll need here is coriander, fennel seeds, star anise, cinnamon sticks, black cardamom, oh, and some clove. And you'll just have to gauge it yourself. You know, I'd probably go a tablespoon of all the small stuff, two sticks of the cinnamon, and then maybe 10 to 15 star anise and only two of these black cardamom. But that's what you'll need. So what we're gonna do here is toast this up in our hot pan. All right, we'll dump this in here. And what we do is we just kind of get it moving around here. And then I'll kind of stir that up for maybe 30 seconds or so until I start to see it smoking. You probably can start to see it smoking a little bit already. And once you see it, there it is over there. You see that? Once you see that, you just kind of pull it for the, the pan off the heat here. Kind of move it around a little bit. And then now that's really smoking, you just dump it up in your bowl right here. You don't want to toast it up too much because it will burn. And there we go. So I've gone ahead and separated the spices into the two cheesecloths that came with my packs and I will now get them into the broth here. I'm just gonna put those in there and then push them down deep into the liquid. So that way these aromatics can really start to bring about this amazing aroma in your house and also good flavor to our broth. There we go. Okay, so look, once you've reached a boil like this, you're gonna lower your fire to a simmering heat. Well, more so low heat. You don't wanna go complete simmer because we're gonna leave the lid off here. Now look, you wanna pay attention to where your water is too. I can see about how far below this little button is and I just watch it from there because it's gonna gradually cook out and we'll add more water back to that level. For now, we're gonna go ahead and season this up. Okay, so the first thing we got is some fish sauce. That's this stuff right here. And let me tell you, it doesn't smell very good, okay? But it's crucial to the great flavor you get in pho. When it's cooked down, it really does bring about this great flavor. But I'll tell you firsthand, it does not smell very good. So I'm just kind of adding it all over here. And that's one fourth cup of fish sauce. All right, next we got this rock sugar. Now I like two large clumps of rock sugar, but my bag ends up having smaller pieces. So I factor it out to be, you know, maybe half a cup of rock sugar. And that's something I also get from the Vietnamese market. So we'll just dump that all over here. There we go, let that get in there, it'll melt down. Now look, from what I've been told, if you cannot find this, you can go with brown sugar. And I would go with maybe a fourth of a cup of brown sugar. You know, because it's, it's probably a little bit more compact, but this works. 
Next, we will add three tablespoons of salt. And uh, I know you guys are thinking, man, this is a lot here. But let me tell you, there's a lot of water up in here. So you need a lot to flavor this. Also, too, the, the seasoning we're putting in now is going to really help flavor that brisket in there. Now, Cajun Ninja Style, I'm going to go ahead and put one and a half tablespoons of some Cajun or your favorite Creole seasoning, whatever you choose. I'll throw it in there. Now, look, I know you guys are thinking, oh, you're going to make your fuzz spicy. Look, I've done it already before. There's mostly salt in Cajun Creole seasoning. What you got in there is a blend of some spices, some pepper, and uh, that'll just put a little pep in his step. You know, not too bad. Won't really change too much of the complexity of the dish. If you don't want to do this, you can always just add more salt. Okay, next I will add in four bay leaves. And look, I know that's not something you probably see in pho, but the aromatics of bay leaves is great in other Cajun dishes. So, uh, you know, why not throw it in pho? I mean, pho is already a beautiful aromatic soup. So we're just going to go ahead and put our own little touch on this. Get all those seasonings down in there. And we're going to continue to let this cook down for several hours. OK, guys, this needs to cook for like eight to 12 hours. And as it cooks down, you'll see a lot of the fats rise to the top, which we will continue to skim. And maybe at about the three and a half hour mark, we will remove the brisket and the oxtails because we don't want them to overcook in there. And we're just going to keep cooking this down all day long. All right, so we are about an hour in, and as you can see, some of the water has evaporated here, which is okay. That's going to happen, and we'll add a little bit more in in just a second. But you can also see a lot of the fats are rising to the top, which is a great thing. We will be able to skim this later on. For now, we're going to allow it to just cook in there, but I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more water back to this, just to kind of get it back up to about right there. And what I'll do is I'll raise my heat back up a little bit so that way the boil can kind of come back up. And once it does, I just lower it back down. And that's good right there. So we'll go ahead and just lower that back down to a low heat. There we go. And just keep letting that simmer. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are roughly three and a half hours in. And before I remove the brisket and oxtail, I'm going to start skimming here. So what I like to do is get to a point where it's not really boiling too much and just gently put the ladle right at the surface. And you'll see the oil just kind of just flows on in. Oil, fat, whatever you want to call it. And from there, I'll just put it in a little bowl on the side here. And I'll just keep repeating this process gradually while I'm cooking for to get as much of the fat out as I can. And that way the clear broth remains. So at about this point, I will go ahead and remove my oxtails and brisket. You know, as you can see, that's just super tender right there. You know, I don't want that to overcook in there. It'll just kind of taste dried out. So we'll get those out of there. And there we go. And as you can see, that meat is tender. I mean, the meat on the oxtail is almost falling off the bone. So what we're going to do from here is let this cool down for a little bit then cover it up and move it to the refrigerator. So that way, later on, when we go to slice it, it will be a little bit more together. If I go trying to cut into it now, the meat's just gonna all fall apart. All right, at this point, we can continue to skim some of this stuff, especially all these little bits that have kind of come up now. We can get those out the pot, put them in our bowl right here. Okay, so we are about six hours in. We have been continuously skimming the top. A lot of the fat you can see has been removed off the top layer. So we're in this bowl right here. But we're going to continue to let this simmer down. We gradually add a little bit water back here and there. And uh, we're going to make sure we simmer this down for a good 8 to 12 hours, you know, depending on when I'm ready to just bowl up. So while we still have time, we're going to go ahead and prep some of our garnish here that we're gonna throw in the bowl when it comes time to serve. What we have here is a bunch of green onions, half of a yellow onion, and one jalapeno. Now this is just based on preference here because the rest of my family doesn't eat all the garnishes. So I'm kind of making enough for myself. I'll also have some lime, some Thai basil, and bean sprouts. But for now, I'm just gonna get this chopped up right here. And there you go. I'll move this to some containers into the fridge for now.
So this is that eye of round that I told you guys about earlier. I had put it in the freezer for about an hour before bringing it out again to slice. It makes it a little easier for me to slice up. You want really thin slices whenever you're doing this. That way, when you put it in your bowl and pour the hot broth over the top, the meat will cook instantly. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We have been cooking this down for roughly 10 hours. And as you can see, all the fat we've been skimming, much of it has congealed. So look, like I said, it's good to go at least 8, 12 or more, even better. But I'm going 10 today. That's good enough for me. At this time, I will add enough water back to get to that point that I had earlier in the video. About an inch below that button right there. There you go. So look, we do this because we want a nice thin broth. There's still going to be some fats up in there, you know, from all the marrow and, you know, the fats from the brisket and whatnot. As you can see, you can see some of it on the top. It's hard to get all of it. So you add more water to really thin it out. So you're not just taking in a lot of fat. But that fat is flavor, though. It, it adds a lot of flavor to this broth right here. All right. At this time, I'm going to go ahead and pass this through a sifter. And that is what you are left with, ladies and gentlemen. This nice, clear broth right here. Look at that. I know it looks brown in the pot, but I mean, when they say clear, you can see through it as you pour it like that. You know, that's a good, clean, clear broth. So look, since I just now added a bunch of water back to it, I'm actually going to add a little bit seasoning back to it as well. I'm adding one tablespoon of salt and roughly a tablespoon of rock sugar back to it. I'm going to let that melt in there, let the salt get in there real good. Put this back on a low setting, and I'll probably cover it up so I can maintain this same amount of liquid here. All right, guys, noodle time. So we're getting some water boiling right here, and what we have is a pack of bon pho toy. I'm not very good at that, but you get the idea. I got this once again at my local Vietnamese market, and... Uh, we're going to put this in some boiling water, and we're going to only boil it for like 20 seconds. Okay, this isn't like your spaghetti pasta here. This is some rice stick noodles. It does not take long at all. You throw it in there, 20 seconds, pull it out, and you're good to go. Okay, we're boiling, so here we go. Put it in there like that. And then just get my stir here. And here we go. Lordy B. There we go. Got them. And there's your noodles. Okay, time to fix our bowl. So I've already put together my bowl here. I've got some of the brisket. I got some of the meat from the oxtail. And I've got that thin slice of raw eye of round. I've topped it off with some green onion and fresh onion. I'm going to pour the hot broth over the top. My noodles are underneath there. I got so much meat you can't even see it. So here we go. We done heated our broth back up to very hot, high heat here. And we're just going to get a nice load of this. Pour it over that meat. Look, you can see instantly cooks the meat. Just keep bringing it in. Ooh, might be dropping some. There we go. I'm just going to fill this up. All right, to this bowl, I'm going to add a few Thai basil here. Throw those in. Usually you can break them up and throw them in, but I don't really need too many. Next, we top this off with a handful of bean sprouts. Whoo, I love these things. We drop in three jalapenos. Squeeze some lime. And that's how I get down. Right there. Let's eat. Yeah. All right, y'all, let's do a little run through. I'm gonna start it off humming. Hum. <laughs> All right, here we go. Mm -mm.
You guys have literally been begging me to do this, which is crazy because, uh, you know, uh, I lack the one major component. I'm not Asian. <laughs> uh, I'm just messing around. But uh, look, I love this stuff. And, and kudos to all my Asian people who do this because this is not easy. This takes time. It's, it's a lot of work. It's an all day thing, you know, but um, the reward is definitely there. Now, can I say it's something I would choose to do over going to my local restaurant and eating it? Probably not. You know, this, this takes so much work, unless I'm doing this for a lot of people, which clearly I am. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I, I probably wouldn't just do this. Uh, it, you know, I enjoy it. It's fun. It's really cool. The, the process of, of when it comes out is rewarding, but I, you know, I'd rather just go eat the restaurant. Um, now, before I dive in, I, I will let you know, I don't really do sriracha or hoisin sauce in my pho because I work really hard on that broth, <laughs> you know, and, I, and, and I, I pay tribute to anybody else who works hard on their broth. Uh, now, look, for me, it, it just, I don't really care for it. You know, I think the jalapenos give it some spice and hoisin's just a little too sweet for me. So, uh, also, I didn't get the meatballs this time. I normally get the meatballs. Um, you can buy them at the Asian market. You throw them in, like, right at the end and, and they get they get heated up. They're already fully cooked, but um, I didn't get any. Now, uh, the meatballs is a texture thing. So, for those of you out there who, you know, have a texture issue, I would not suggest getting them because they're kind of uh, maybe tofu-y. They're not quite like your standard spaghetti and meatball. Um, you know, uh, uh, lastly, I do not do cilantro, all right? It tastes like soap to me, all right? I'm just saying. Those of you out there who love it, please, by all means, add it in. Now look, if you've never had pho before and you don't know if you don't like cilantro, I would suggest saying no cilantro because I'm telling you, the first time I ever had this, it came with cilantro. I didn't know I didn't like cilantro. I thought pho tasted like uh, a dirty sink, <laughs> but uh, clearly it does not. It was the cilantro and I have a genetic thing, what have you. Okay, look, I have talked to you guys heads off. I'm starving, let's take a bite. Let's get a sip of this broth. Oh, so good. Mm. It's just, it's real clean, you know, a real thin broth. It's flavorful. Once you add all that other onion in there, the lime, the jalapenos give it that kick. Oh man, it's so good. And I'm gonna tell you guys, everything I did Cajun Ninja style really didn't change the complexity of the dish. It still tastes very similar to traditional pho. You know, that bell pepper and celery, it's not enough to go changing the flavor completely, but the cool thing about it is, is bell pepper and celery add a little bit more health benefits to the pho. They're loaded in vitamin A, vitamin C, potassium. So all I'm doing is enhancing the broth. Oh, let's get this. Mmm. Mmm. That is so good. That brisket is so tender. Look at that. I mean, that, that's just, it's falling apart. It literally, uh, if I squeeze the, the chopsticks real hard, it might fall apart right here. Mmm. So good. It's, it's like, the way to eat pho, if you haven't had it before, is you get a little bit of broth, sip it, and eat here. Mmm. Mmm. So good. I know this is not the most etiquette dish to eat in front of you guys, but uh, I'm starving and you wanted to see this. <laughs> mm. So look, the amount of seasoning I added to this, it's really perfect for almost anyone. It's not too salty. That rock sugar didn't make it overly sweet. Like if you were using regular sugar, it's more confined. So if you were to use that much regular sugar, it'd be a super sweet broth. But this is, has a very small hint of sweetness. Now look, when you get to the end right here, you can taste your broth and decide if you want it to be more flavorful, if you want more salt, you know, if you want a little bit more sweetness, you can add more than what I've done here. You know, 
Your bowl of pho is gonna be based on your preference. So you're gonna have to really play around with it. But I'm telling you, this is, this is very close to what you get. Oh, so good. Well, all right, guys, I knocked it out. I'm sorry this video is so long-winded, but it's very hard to make something under 30 minutes that literally takes you 12 hours. Okay, so for those of you out there who may critique me on the time of this one, I apologize, okay? But nonetheless, we got it done. I hope you give it a try one day, and I hope you enjoy it. Well, that is a wrap. I'll see you next time. Bye